Every year it feels like a new shiny camera comes out onto the market. All the glamorous new specs, higher megapixels, faster focusing, new processors, new sensors. All the new things that make it sound more enticing, that make it sound like a better option than the cameras that came before it. But cameras are tools at the end of the day, and sometimes this gets overlooked when a new camera comes out. We forget about what's really necessary to take photos, how little all of these new flashy specs really mean in the grand scheme of becoming a better photographer. In today's video, I wanna turn back the clock and bring out a camera that sort of started it all for me on this channel. And that's the Fujifilm X100F. It's crazy to think this camera came out five years ago. In this day and age, you could probably call this ancient technology now. I wanna bring this camera back out of the shadow of the X100V, shoot with it again, and talk about how this camera holds up today. This is the X100F in 2022. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I think it makes sense to talk about image quality first because that's probably one of the main things people worry about uh, when considering you know an older version of a camera versus you know picking up the latest version the x100f has fujifilm's third generation 24.3 megapixel sensor it's worth noting fujifilm is now on their fifth generation they just recently announced the xh2s the x100v has the fourth generation sensor and i'll be honest i really feel like the difference between these generations is very minuscule. I, I wouldn't even be able to tell you the difference just by looking. Sometimes I wonder if it's more of a marketing thing to make you think something has drastically changed. I'm definitely not a pixel peeper, so I can't say a whole too much about, you know, image quality or sharpness. I think when it comes to image quality, it's gonna be a lot more subjective. Um, not everyone's gonna want, you know, the sharpest looking photo. Um, personally, I find the more digital or sharper our image looks, the more digital it looks. And I've always tried to achieve a more filmic aesthetic in my photos, um, especially in my street photography. So a sharper image isn't necessarily going to be better in my opinion. In fact, I find the X100F's softer look to be a bit more desirable when trying to emulate that filmic look. That's my opinion and your opinion might be completely different and you want to have that you know, highest resolution then if that's the case, you probably aren't going to be considering an older version of a camera anyway. For what it's worth, I think the X100F has a very capable image quality. I mean, this camera came out five years ago, people, so it's gonna be pretty good. So I don't think anyone picking up an X100F in 2022 is gonna have a lot to complain about its image quality. It still holds up pretty well. Quick mention of the price of the X100F right now. Um, it seems like the price has actually gone up, um, and that's because the X100V is literally out of stock almost everywhere you look. So that's kind of brought the price of the X100F up. Um, but on eBay, they go around for just under a thousand dollars. But if you look hard enough, you can find some cheaper ones on the used camera forums like FredMiranda.com. Um, I've seen some going around $700 to $800. That's still about $600 to $800 cheaper than a used X100V, which is a lot more expensive and harder to find. So in comparison, the X100F is still a lot cheaper than the X100V.
One of the major changes from the X100F to the X100V was the removal of the D-pad. And this set a lot of photographers off as it meant losing customizable tactile buttons. We saw the same thing happen to the XE4. It lost its D-pad as well as a rear dial. It seems like the design philosophy of these camera companies is to, you know, get rid of physical buttons um, and push the use of touchscreen functionality. I don't know about you, but nobody asked for touchscreens on cameras. I mean, at first, this technology was kind of cool, you know? Oh, nice, uh, the camera has a touchscreen now. You know, I can move through the menus with my finger. It's pretty neat, right? But, you know, in practice, especially in street photography, um, specifically using touchscreen functions, um, where you swipe up and down on the back LCD screen to you know, get to whatever you have it programmed to. I found it to be really cumbersome um, and I've honestly turned off touch screens on almost all of my cameras. So you could technically look at the X100F as an upgrade in that case, as it has no touch screen and it has the D-pad, which was taken away from us on the X100V. You know, part of what I love about Fujifilm cameras is that they have this analog design. And when you start removing, you know, physical tactile buttons from the camera and replace it with touch screens, I don't know, it just feels like it's going in the other direction. So shooting with the X100F and its 35mm focal length, it was a little weird. Uh, I wasn't really accustomed to, you know, thinking in 35mm terms. I kind of think about compositions and, and see scenes in the sort of 50mm higher range right now. So it's worthy to bring this up though, because the X100F, it's a fixed lens camera. And you might be okay with a 35mm focal length right now but there may come a time later down the road where that focal length doesn't work for you anymore. Um, or you don't really want to shoot 35 millimeter as much. And you could say I'm in that place right now. And you know, that's okay. You, there's no need for me to feel ashamed or for you to feel ashamed about moving on to a different focal length that works for the way you want to compose photos. The focal length of a lens matters a lot when it comes to photography. So you're going to want to choose and shoot with a focal length that's going to work for the kind of photos you want to take. And this brings us back to the idea of cameras being tools at the end of the day. Use what works for you in this moment. And maybe if that changes down the road, most likely it will. That's all right. You figure it out later. So the X100F in 2022, this would have been a lot more of a throwback if I talked about the X100T or the X100S, but the F still deserves its love despite being in the X100V's shadow. You know, this camera means a lot to me because it was the camera I used when I first started this YouTube channel. And it honestly got me taking street photography a lot more seriously and doing it every day um, just because of how easy it was to bring along with me. And that mattered a lot in my growth as a photographer, just that portability of a camera and just having a camera that inspires you to want to shoot. Cameras might be tools, but cameras are such an important part of our process as photographers. It's why we love them. It's why we talk about them. It's why we watch other people talk about them. Cameras let us do what we love to do. And more than half the fun is that we get to use them. Last but not least, thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video.
I've been using Squarespace for the past five years and it's become a hub for all the things related to my photography. It's where I share my favorite images, talk about my process, as well as sell photo editing presets. And now, finally, it's a place for you to buy prints of my selected works. Squarespace makes it easy for me to do all of this with their customizable templates and intuitive e-commerce controls. You can set up and have a professional looking site in minutes. So if you're thinking about having something more than just an Instagram page, visit squarespace.com slash and get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And for those of you real ones who haven't clicked away yet, you can use this code for 50% off anything from my store. Love you guys. I'll see you all in the next one.